Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy, in the continuing saga of the Fairmont project. This is the first major component that we're removing from this vehicle, and that is this differential. We're gonna get out in this video. So this video is all about removing this differential. I've gone in previously, in fact, about a couple of days ago, and every fastener I've hit it up with some penetrating oil so that it can have plenty of time to soak in. Uh, it's not too bad underneath this car, but you kind of never know. Uh, general overview is there are four mounting points on the differential. That's why they call it a four link suspension. You've got these lower control arms, you've got these upper control arms that locate the differential to the body uh, that need to come loose. And these are the coil springs that hold the back end of the vehicle up uh, that are supported by these lower control arms. Now, my intention is to try and save the parking brake cables because I believe I can reuse them on my disc brakes. So I am gonna get into the brakes back here and disconnect this from inside the drum brake assembly. And as I said, I can possibly reuse it. Hubcaps, I know, they're going away for good. Bye bye hubcap. <laughs> Goodbye old wheels and dry rotted tires. <laughs> Goodbye lug nuts, you will be replaced. Goodbye four lug. It will multiply and have babies for another stud. See ya. Bye bye. Goodbye, drum brakes. We're just gonna have to take all these apart, get down to that cable, because uh, this is a guy that I'm trying to save. I know it seems weird, but it might actually work, because the cables that came in my kit uh, for the parking brake are not for this setup. So I just got my fingers crossed that what I'm about to attempt will work. If it doesn't, I'll figure something else out. You know it's serious when I bring out the trash can. <laughs> Whoops. Huh. You are an odd size. Really odd size. I've never encountered this odd size before. Okay. I have another plan. I'm just not feeling nostalgic. Just not. I'm feeling like I want to go fast. Ooh, I got an idea. Disco. And you know what? I can check it real quick. Yeah, this cable is considerably longer. It would have to hook up here and connect here. So for the parking brake, gonna have to figure something out. But that's just the parking brake. It's not gonna affect the regular brakes. But this dream may or may not happen. For now, just gonna let that hang and I'm gonna do the other side just to preserve it. Gotta empty out the diff. We don't want its precious bodily fluids everywhere. In fact, I'm gonna go get a bigger splash thing. I'm gonna leave a couple in at the top so it doesn't completely fall down. Die, my daubers, die. Let's 
gonna get the dirt out because that just makes everything gross. It's gonna be gross enough. Trust me, it'll be gross enough. There was hardly any fluid in there at all. Let's look just because we can. Look how dinky that is. It's like a little baby differential. It's like my first differential kit. Be thankful this isn't smell-o-vision because it smells rank. Rank. I'm not doing a fluid change. I'm just doing a make it lighter. But just in case somebody wants this differential, I'm gonna do what I can to try and preserve it to some degree. Just in case somebody out there wants to restore a Fairmont to its stock form. Not me. Not my choice. I have chosen something much more sinister. Going to destroy an old classic car. To make it do my bidding. Because I can. You're watching. I know, why bother? I like to keep my shop clean if I can. Just gonna disconnect the brake line here since that's where I'm gonna be coming back in anyway. I've got a pan on the floor ready to catch any drips, but as soon as I disconnect this, I'm gonna wedge the brake pedal to the floor to keep it from bleeding the master all the way out. It is the correct size wrench, it's just got a bit of undercoating on it. I was hoping that the uh, penetrating oil would eat through it. Oh, that's awesome. Knock this out of the way with a pair of pliers, we're good. As long as I'm down on the ground and I know this is loose already, I'm just going to disconnect the negative battery cable, put her to sleep. That should keep it from leaking out. As long as I'm here, I might as well, and I've got the battery disconnected, I might as well put it in neutral. That'll make removing the drive shaft that much easier. As long as I've got it down, I'm going to open the trunk so that I can get access to the upper shock mounts that are down in there. That's right, penetrating oil while we're working down underneath. Oddly, these are 12 millimeter. And a little trick is to jam a pry bar in here. Gonna get them all loose first. Somebody really wanted these to stay on. I have a concern. If I remove the drive shaft from the transmission, the transmission may leak all of its goo out. I'm not ready for that to happen yet. So I'm gonna take this here bungee cord and I'm going to strategically position it in such a way to where it holds the drive shaft up inside the car while I remove the differential. That couldn't be better. Not limited slip. <laughs> Weak. But that'll stay up in there nicely while we take uh, the differential out. I call this the ankle buster. Because they're like an octopus just waiting to kick out and get you in the ankles. I'm now gonna support the differential. I'm gonna use my transmission jack to do it with.
as an extra precautionary measure, I have a tie strap here. Aw. Ooh, look. Life forms. I'm going to throw them outside for the birds. Is that actually moving? No. No, it's not. Well, it feels supported. Now I'm trying to decide if the shocks are holding this up or if this lower control arm is. Spring tension here is what holds the back of the car up. Now rear springs don't have the same kind of tension front springs do. I could cut them, but I mean, that's something you usually reserve for like front coils. I don't, I don't think I need to go there. I think actually if I get my support and put it under this side and undo this shock, I can see if that'll let it come out. It's supported in the center. I'm hoping that'll be good. And if not, I have another support I can put on that side. Yeah, it's spring compresses, no problem. It is an 18, I believe. It is. Surprisingly easy. Surprisingly. Just trying to see if this spring has any tension on it. It doesn't have a lot. You know what? I'm going to actually undo the other shock so that it's even on both sides so I'm not all weird. But I think I might try to do the upper mounts and I keep hitting my head in the stupid exhaust pipe. I might try to up undo these upper mounts to uh, get those loose. I think the lower ones would be of more value. You know what? I'm just gonna go for it and try to get these fasteners out of the lower control arm because that way I know the springs aren't in play anymore and all the weight is on my um, transmission jack. It's not going anywhere. I just don't know what kind of spring tension this is under and I'm just being cautious. not very successful. I've made an executive decision. Yes, that's right. I'm just gonna cut them. It'll take the tension off. Then I'll just have to worry about the weight of the differential. It just feels easier, more efficient. I just gotta be real careful on this side because the fuel line's right by this spring. The fire extinguisher's right over there. And one right over there. I will uh, try not to kill you. was dramatic. Look, Ma, no springs. No longer have to worry about spring tension pushing down on everything. I'm hoping that means it'll 
help free things up so I can get my bolts out. So much easier. Done. Comes apart real nice now. Those upper ones and we're done. Also 15s, also 18. these through bolts and these upper control arms and this thing should be mine I'm gonna do a little strategic prying to get control arms and such out of the equation Old wimpy differential removed. Well, there's a problem right there. You got no differential. Yeah, it's interesting how this one's nice and pliable and how this one's virtually wasted. So we've got to get the control arms out now. I'm going to go for the uppers first because they're easy and I'm just going to hit the bolts with a little penetrating oil to start with and it almost looks like I gotta drop the exhaust to get to this one. Darn it. Oh well, didn't want to have to do that but kind of looks unavoidable. But it can be held up with the same bungee cord that it's being held up with now. like an 18 nut on the outside and I got a 15 swivel for the inner. Control arm gone. Yay. Huh. It's almost like, it's almost like this bolt was too big or worn out or something. You can see where it was rubbing in there. So I checked the other side and you can see it has this little sleeve in there to keep it from rattling around. This one, sleeve is missing. Weird. There's a through bolt that goes through this area. It's uh, 18 on this side, 15 on this side. Watch out for that. Spring seat, wasted. Old, crusty, yucky control arms. For this one, I gotta go for a slightly different strategy because muffler in the way. There it is, the last one. 
Last up, we got the shocks. There's these little rubber uh, caps over the top of them, help keep them from rusting. Uh, these are oddly 14. That was so easy. Now, just grab the bushing. It's all ready for a new one. Well, there you have it. The removal of a differential from a Fox body. If you have a Mustang, this is virtually the same process. Uh, in fact, there are a lot of Fox body Fords out there, but this is how you do it. Now, cutting those coil springs, that helped a lot. Took away the spring tension and all that, but be very careful, especially on this right-hand side, the gas tank and the fuel lines are in the neighborhood. Just saying. Anyhow, if you have automotive questions not covered in this video, airatthecarguy.com is where I ask you to go. I'll put a link in the description for you. Google+, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, if you wish to connect with me socially, close each of my videos. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.